glad you're here. I need your help. You see, I read in the Bible where it says if you do something good for someone, it's just like doing it for Jesus. And I thought, what a wonderful time of year to be a blessing to a lot of people. So I came up with this great plan that you are a part of, that is, if you're willing to help me. You see, the plan is this. Well, we're going to outgive God this year for Christmas. We're going to outgive Him. We can do it if we work really hard. You see, let me explain what the problem is. I got a little tiny problem. Well, here it is. I got a nice basket, and I filled it with freshly shelled pecans. And I gave them all to Word Bird, and he was so happy. And another bigger basket filled with sunflower seeds, his absolute favorite. He was so happy, and I said, yes, I've outgiven God this year. I blessed Word Bird. This is where the problem comes in. You see, Word Bird went out, and he made me this absolutely beautiful wreath. It's awesome, and I'm going to put it on my front door. Uh, but uh, he made it with his own little beak. Isn't that precious? Oh, I was so happy to get this, but that also meant that I did not outgive God. So then I said, I know what I'll do. I'll do something for my church. So I found this big Christmas tree, and I had it delivered over to the church, and they said, oh, this is great, Miss Vicki. The children can decorate the bottom, and all the tall adults can decorate the top. They were so happy, so happy they gave me this big box of Christmas decorations. So I didn't out give God that time either. There are some absolutely wonderful decorations in this box, and I have um, been decorating the cave, as you can well see, for several hours with this big blessing. I didn't get to outgive God. Lavish? Huh? Lavish? Will you? La lavish? Huh? Will you take that Christmas hat off? I know you like those floppy things, but there are earmuffs inside the hat. Huh? Oh, uh, what is this? It's my list. It's a pretty big list. Okay, your Christmas list. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It has a briefcase. Huh? Perfume. Huh? How old are you, Lavish? Huh? How old are you, Lavish? Four. Four. A necktie. Uh-huh. Power tools. Huh? More power tools. Huh? Lavish, these are not things that a four-year-old would play with. No, Miss Vicky. They're for me to give, not to get. I want to outgive God. You're going to help me outgive God this year? Yeah. Don't you think it's a great plan? Huh? <laughs> oh, lavish. Those earmuffs and that hat. You just like that hat, don't you? Well, I really want to decorate this cave, but I want to tell you something. If you follow the same plan I've been doing, trying to outgive God, you better go home right now and clean up your bedroom. <gasps> Because the way I keep giving things to people and God keeps causing other people to give things back to me, you won't have room in your bedroom. <sighs> <coughs> Miss Vicki. Oh, hi, Word Bird. Hey there. How do you like the cave we've been decorating all oh, day? Oh, I love it. You it's know, awesome. this red garland reminds me of worms. It does. I, it makes me hungry. Oh, it doesn't remind me of worms. Well, um... Miss Vicky? Yes. You you've been talking about planting seeds. Did you realize that? Planting seeds? Oh yes. You know, when you plant a few sunflower seeds, you get a few sunflowers. Yeah. But when you plant a field of sunflower seeds, you get thousands and thousands and thousands of sunflowers and well, one happy word bird. Yeah, that's what I thought, word bird. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna finish decorating this cave. Let's see what's in this. There are some cool things in this box. They're awesome. Ooh, there, there's a big candy cane and a candy cane and a candy cane and and a walking cane and a can. A walking cane. It's sticky. Uh, uh, it's oh, it's got carvings all over it. Oh, it's been carved on. Somebody's been carving it. And, whoa, what is it doing in a Christmas decoration box? Oh, whoa, whoa, Th there are wings carved on this cane. It has wings? Yeah. It's a flying cane and not a walking cane. <laughs> Wait a minute, there are a whole lot of wings carved. 
loved on this cane. Oh, that sounds like a flock flying home for Christmas. Huh? I'm flying home for Christmas. Oh, word bird. And, and then there's the, there's a box. Actually, that's that looks more like a manger. And and there's a star on this side. And and a weird looking building. I don't know what kind of building that. It's got big columns. I it's just a big I don't know some sort of building. And and whoa, there's something carved in the handle. Ooh, ah, splinter. There's a there's a there's a word that describes this cave right now and my bedroom. It's messy, eh? Messy, eh? Yeah, yeah. Let me let you see it. Word, can word. I? Here, you can read it like that. Read it. M M Messiah. Huh? Yeah. You know, as I was saying, you plant what you want your harvest to be. I want you to have a wonderful Christmas, so I'm going to plant the Word of God on that word window into your heart right now. And you know, I think it'll explain who the Messiah really is. Really? Sure. Let's look at the word window, Miss Vicky. Okay. It says John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I sure am glad you found my walking cane. First, I lost my carving tool. Then I misplaced my cane. Looks like I'm lost now. I don't remember walking here with or without my cane. I guess my memory just isn't what it used to be when I was younger. There are some things I remember quite well, though, like the promise God made to me. You. Well, my name's Simeon. I haven't quite forgotten that yet. <laughs> hey, there's another one of those big, beautiful butterflies. Hello. Like I saw over at the temple today. A temple? Why, my name is Brightly. And Hello, I, Simeon. Simeon, I'm, I'm Miss Vicky. An, Hello, Miss Vicky. Another, uh, an, another butterfly. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Miss Vicky, I think I can help you understand who Simeon is. You see, he saw a butterfly sort of like me way back at the time when Jesus was born. I found his story, Miss Vicky, when I was looking through my grandmother's leaves. I found the story about Simeon. Oh, he really is a very old fellow, isn't he? Yes, he is. You know the cane that he's holding, Miss Vicky? It tells the story of Jesus' birth. Isn't that right, Simeon? That's right. Grandmother's leaves say that he carved the first wings on that cane when the, shepherd, when the shepherds were outside of Bethlehem and an angel came to them on the night that Jesus was born. That angel told the shepherds that a savior was going to be born in Bethlehem that night. And then the angel told the shepherds where to look for the child. They said, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. <laughs> well, suddenly, Miss Vicky, all around that one angel, there appeared a multitude of angels, more than anyone could count. And they were all singing and praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Oh, look at all those wings, angels' wings, that Simeon carved on that cane. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like to have all those angels singing and praising God? Well, when they left, 
the shepherds decided right then and there to go into Bethlehem and find the Savior child that night. And that's the next picture that you see in the cane, a manger. They found him, just like the angels had said, that beautiful child, wrapped up in the swaddling clothes, lying there so innocent and peaceful, while Mary, his mother, and Joseph, her husband, looked on. Oh, look, grandmother's leaves say that there were even angels looking on. Woohoo! Do you know what the shepherds did next? They went and told everyone, everyone that they could find, that the Messiah had been born, the Savior of Israel. And everyone who heard marveled at what they said. You know, on the king, there's a star there. You see, God wanted this news to go far and wide, and he placed a special star in the sky to guide some very wise men from a faraway country right to where Joseph and Mary lived with young Jesus. Yes, they did. <laughs> you know, grandmother's leaves say that Simeon was a watchful man. It says here that he loved God and that he prayed often. He lived his whole life for God. And in fact, God talked to Simeon by his Holy Spirit and told him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ child. And that's why this picture of the temple is so important. Mm. That was the place, Miss Vicki, where Mary and Joseph brought God's son Jesus, our Savior, to be dedicated to God. And that was the place where Simeon met them 40 days after Jesus had been born. <laughs> you know, it was a good thing that on that morning, Simeon carved the word Messiah under the top of the handle of the cane. There it is. This was the place that he held the cane, and Simeon wanted so much to hold the baby savior. And as he carved, he reminded himself that morning, one more time of God's promise to him that he would not see death until he had seen the Christ child. And Miss Vicki, that was the day, it says so right here on the leaves, that was the day that the Holy Spirit of God led Simeon to the temple. And that was the day that he got to hold baby Jesus in his arms. Did you know that Jesus' name means Jehovah saves? That's the same thing as God saves. Oh, Simeon was so excited to meet Mary and Joseph and to actually get to hold the Savior child that he dropped his special carving tools because he just began to praise God for all he was worth. You began to praise God? Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light to revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. Oh, 
what a blessing it was in the temple today. When Joseph and Mary came in to bless the child Jesus, and, the, and, and I saw that Jesus, and I knew it was the Lord's Christ. And Anna was there, and she was praising God, and she was telling everyone of the salvation of the Lord. And, and she was old in age like I was, Miss Vicky, and she was still praising God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, I just want you to see this picture of my grandmother's leaves, Miss Vicky. Oh, look. You see, as Simeon was so excited and he dropped his carving tool, what Grandmother Butterfly saw where the carving tool hit the floor. And she went down there to guard it, and then she saw a tall angel standing next to Simeon, and she flew up to his ear, and she whispered something in his ear. And then that big, tall angel reached down to the floor. He picked that carving tool up, and he put it inside Simeon's pouch. <gasps> Take your pouch. Take your pouch, Simeon. Hey, it's there, Miss Vicky. That's my carving tool. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, boy, I'm so glad I have this. Now I can finish my cane. Finish it? Rightly, he's carving in it again. <laughs> That's right. This carving tool has one more job to do. J E S U S. Right, Lee. Oh, Jesus! That's right, Miss Vicky. <laughs> That's right. Praise God. Oh. You know, you're so gifted in, in carving. I have a gift I want to give to you. Oh. It's just a small gift, but it, it's called a pencil. Oh, how beautiful. And you can write with it. And when, when oh, the writing part God. starts to disappear, you just take your carving knife and make it a little sharper. Praise God. And you'll be able to write with that. And Miss Vicky, yes. I want to give you this walking cane, and it'll always remind you of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. Oh, thank you, Simeon. Thank you, Simeon. <laughs> oh, what a nice gift, Miss Vicky. Oh, you know what, Miss Vicky? What, Brightly? You just can't outgive God. You know why? Why, Brightly? Because he gave us Jesus. You're right, Brightly. You cannot outgive God. You know, God did give us the very best gift of all. He gave us his very best. He gave us his only son. And that only son came and gave his life. And then he gave us the Holy Spirit, the one who comes inside of our heart and leads and guides us into all truth and teaches us about God and about Jesus. Oh, you just can't not outgive God. But you know, I'm wondering about your heart right now. If you have Jesus in your heart, that's the most important thing all year around, not just at Christmas. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to ask Jesus to come into your heart. But you better start making room if you do because you cannot outgive God. Here's how you do it. You just simply ask for the free gift of eternal life and heaven is free. Just say this with me and mean it in your heart and Jesus will come into your heart. Just say, dear God, I'm sorry for all of my sins and I believe that Jesus is your free gift. Say, Jesus, Come into my heart right now. I want to make my life, that's right, say, I want to make my life a gift to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that, if you'll please write me, I want to know about it. I'll tell Brightly and Lavish and Wordbird and all of our guests that come here to explore behind the waterfall in this cave, and I'll tell them that you asked Jesus into your heart. Write to us behind the waterfall, P.O. Box 888, Roebuck, South Carolina, 29376. I really want to know that you asked Jesus into your heart. Right now, I've got to finish wrapping all these presents. And the government.
if you give something, make room. You cannot out give God. Jesus comes in and gives you a new start. It can be Christmas every day when Jesus comes in and makes a way. It can be possible for dreams to come true when Jesus lives in you. It can be Christmas in your heart. Let Jesus come in and give you a new start. It can be Christmas in your heart when Jesus comes in and gives you a new start. Merry Christmas! Welcome to the home of the Rockettes, where I am very busy writing all of their Christmas cards. Mm-hmm, all of them. You see, Rockettes, well, they live in rocks, and they don't read, and they don't write. Well, I don't have time to teach them, although I plan to make that part of my new year. I am trying to get all of their Christmas cards and letters sent. Word bird, lavish, they're going to let me write my own, and they're going to color it for me. <clears throat> Well, anyway, I'm trying to get all of their Christmas cards ready, but anyway, let's talk for just a minute. I am so glad that you know Jesus this year at Christmas, and I am so glad that you're going to tell someone who doesn't know Jesus all about his love for them this year for Christmas. That'd be the best Christmas gift you could ever give to them. They don't have to unwrap it. They don't have to put it somewhere to collect dust, but it'll be the most important gift they've ever received. You see, if someone's sad at Christmas, Jesus came to give them joy all the days of their life. And if someone is lonely at Christmas, He can fill them with so much fellowship with His Spirit living inside of them. Uh, you could never visit them enough to fill that empty spot inside of their hearts until Jesus comes into their heart. Then they'll never be lonely again because He will never leave them and He'll never forsake them. And there's something else. A lot of people at Christmas, they feel very sad, and, and sometimes they feel very confused at Christmas. Maybe they don't know what Christmas is really all about. They say it's gifts, or it's just toys, or it's a special dinner. Well, it is all of those things, but it's much, much more than that. It's about Jesus. It's about God. 
It's about God giving his best gift and then Jesus giving all that he had, his very life. And then it's about Jesus sending us the Holy Spirit to live inside of our hearts and to give us peace all the days of our lives. Now that's a gift you can't go out and purchase for someone, but it is a very powerful gift. Give someone the Prince of Peace, Jesus, this year. Well, this is my Christmas card to you. Thank you so much for being with all of us behind the waterfall. We look so forward to being in your homes and telling you about Jesus. So I want you to know that Jesus can be the very best gift that you can give to someone. And I just trust that today you ask Jesus to come into your heart and that you just received the best gift ever. So from all of us behind the waterfall, we want to wish you the very, very best Christmas. You can have Jesus in your heart all year round. Merry Christmas.